What's going on guys, Possibly 6 here, back to another video, and today I'm here to do my Smackdown review from Atlanta, Georgia. Literally just a day away from SummerSlam, I will be doing my predictions as soon as I'm done doing the show. The show was fine for the most part, but there was some stuff that I'm like, oh yeah, I forgot this is Smackdown. But, let me know in the comment section below what you guys thought about the show. I kick right off into the action with a good old fashioned Donnie Bor Donnie Donnie Brook match. What? It's basically an uh, no disqualification match as Drew McIntyre takes on Sheamus. Winner gets to face whoever is the Universal Champion or WWE Undisputed Universal Champion. They could have worded that more if, even if they wanted to. They'll face whoever wins the world title match at Clash of the Castle, basically, between Lesnar and Reigns. Well, uh, we've seen this match before, I'm pretty sure. I'm pretty sure they had a match. Uh, I think it was actually called a No Holds Bar match and not a Donnie, Bro Donnie Brook match. Whatever the fuck that is. Yeah, we've seen this match before, except we didn't have shillelaghs and chicanery. Um, Sheamus attacks Drew during the entrance. Sheamus gets thrown over the announce table. Drew gets a table. Shillelagh usage. It wasn't bad. It did go on for a little bit, though. I will say, though, this this episode of SmackDown did breeze by, for the most part, I did feel like. Um, there was a chair to the face. Ouch. There was an air raid crash attempt, but no luck. Future shock onto chairs. Holland interferes. Belly to belly to Holland through the table. The Sheamus gets thrown into the bar desk, and all of a sudden, Pete Dunne shows the fuck out of nowhere, and he dives on the Drew off of some barrels. And then we get a bar stool to the back. Drew's back was bleeding. That looked pretty brutal. Uh, we get an uh, air raid from the top and a kick out. And then we got a big-ass show lately that looks like it's got, like, like pointy shit on it. It was kind of funny, to be honest. Big Shelly got used. Claymore to Dunn, but a bro kick. Oh no, Sheamus is going to win. No, a kick out. Sheamus cannot believe it. Um, A bro kick attempt, but a power bomb through the table. Sheamus was starting to bleed by his shoulder, kind of like where his pectoral was. That looked pretty scary. Um, eventually, Sheamus was on, on, Sheamus on the knees, Claymore kick, one, two, three, and Drew wins. A pretty physical match, too, even though we've seen it before, but, I mean, they, WWE has repeated a lot of shit at this point, so I'll, if I'm going to complain about one thing being repeated, I might as well complain about everything else that's being repeated when it comes to this company. Kayla, my goodness, is what I wrote down. She's interviewing McIntyre, and he says, "I'm going to be taking the, I'm going to be taking the title from a part-time champion." And all of a sudden, Theory shows up, and he attacks Drew with the briefcase. More on them in a little bit. We get a recap of Corbin and McAfee last week. Corbin shows up. He's got a ticket, popcorn, and a sign of uh, Pat that his hair was sticking out. And that's coming from me as someone whose hair is likes to stick out like I just look like I got the Rod Stewart treatment and it says loser on it. Okay, I thought he was gonna be there for the entire show, but he was only there for like 15 minutes, I'm pretty sure. So we get a recap of the uh six man tag and uh, Rollins attack on Riddle. That match has been pulled. So either Seth's gonna have a match at SummerSlam. Or he's not. I'll get to that. I'll get to that when I get to my predictions. But so yeah, uh, Riddle is out, and then uh, we get the uh, SummerSlam card rundown. Uh, Corbin throws a uh, popcorn in McAfee's face. Um, they get in into each other's faces. Corbin goes to walk away. Pat turn. Pat turns his back, low blow, and Pat looked so like he legit got kicked in the sack. That was actually kind of funny. Um, okay. It's the further to get heat on Corbin, which, uh, again, I'll, I'll get to that. I'll get to their match prediction here in a little bit. Uh, Theory's backstage. Same shit, different day. Because it's the same fucking promo, he says, 
all the damn time. Apparently, he didn't take Roman's lesson and say, really? That's that's all you say? That's all that's all you say? You do you know you know how to cut a promo, right? God, that was fucking hilarious. And that was that was fantastic. And he says, I'm cashing in this this Sunday. He doesn't even look convincing for God's sake. He doesn't sound convincing, he doesn't look convincing. At least show emotion for God's sake. You just have, have the same douchey smirk that you always have. And then Heyman just shows up like, oh, you think you're going to cash in, huh? No, you're not. You're going to have to think twice before that. Aliyah versus Shotzi. Who did I piss off to get an Aliyah entrance? Who did I piss off to have this match? Apparently it was supposed to be Aliyah versus um, Lacey Evans, but pay, uh, Lacey Evans wasn't medically cleared, which I thought, oh, that's just an excuse for Lacey to come in and, um, and uh, get her heat. But no, actually Evans did not show up, so okay. Um, and the crowd goes mild. They did not give a fuck about this match. And honestly, I wouldn't have either, even though I really like Shotzi. Shotzi wins a match. Hell has frozen over and pigs are falling from the sky. But what they did afterwards is absolute bullshit. We had a recap of Raquel versus DeVille last week, and then after the match... That was uh, an exclusive, uh, a digital exclusive. Ronda comes down after DeVille says, oh, you people are booing me. I deserve respect. Then Ronda just throws her around because, uh, because, you know, probably, you know how probably Ronda feels about, you know, conspiracy theories and she refuses to uh, pay trans. And probably know Ronda, she kind of hates, probably hates the same community that DeVille is in. I would not be shocked if Rhonda hates those people. I really would not, because she's a fucking moron. Rhonda is, not DeVille. DeVille, though, hot damn. So, Rhonda and Morgan are backstage. They're doing, like, a photo shoot for the match they're having at SummerSlam. And then Natalia shows up. Oh, it's a tag match. I pretend to be shocked. And then the Ville shows up. Liv... Cuts a promo. It feels scripted. I really can't tell if it is or not. Um, and then Shotzi's in the ring. She's laughing. Here comes Rhonda, and then she just she she just throws um she just throws Shotzi like a sack of shit. So okay, thanks for coming, Shotzi. And um, I put who is doing Rhonda's makeup. She kind of looks like the Berserker from 1993, which is kind of funny and kind of sad to think about because the Berserker, at least he gave a shit. Rhonda doesn't. And she says to a fan, you shut up and your mom failed you. Okay, then. That was out of nowhere. And then Olivia Rhonda took on Sonya and Natty. But can they get along? They can. I mean, the match itself was just... You know, Liv not wanting to tag it because she wants to prove that she she can do this by her own. She eventually does tag in Ronda. Oblivion to Natty. Ankle lock to DeVille. Liv and Ronda win. And there you go. Okay, cool. Moving on. It sounds like I'm bashing the show, which I'm really not. It's just that none of the matches really amounted to anything. We're going to recap of the tag title match. It's uh, running in the bank. Street Profits and the Usos come down. Here comes Double J, Jeff Jarrett, the man who broke over 6,000 guitars and never drew a single dime, so said uh, Mike Graham. Though, to be fair, I don't think Mike Graham really sold any tickets either. Sorry to Mike Graham, but a bit hypocritical, perhaps. Um, Jarrett says, well, since you guys are talking all this talk, just get it out of your system. And the Profits and Usos, I mean, Montez was fired up. I could... I could Certainly say that he's got hell. He's got a hell of a charisma. Um. So a brawl happens, but a super kick to Jarrett. Uh oh, that's not good. Jarrett shoves Usos and Ford flies. Okay. I just Jarrett just feels like an afterthought in all honesty, though. To be fair, I don't know who else you would have gotten to be a special guest ref in Tennessee. I mean, they wouldn't have gotten Jerry Lawler. And for fuck's sake, God forbid they would get Glenn Jacobs, a.k.a. Kane. Because that guy is a fucking moron. And if you guys don't know, check his Twitter. 
I used to respect Kane. And now he's really blacklisted his entire career. Just by the stupid shit he says on social media. So we're going to recap of the New Day and the Raiders feud because this needed to happen. New Day come down. Maxine Dupree, the Maxwell male boss. Would you fuck off with this already? Why is this on my television when I would put down? Night is there. Just fire everyone. Fire everyone. This is bad. This is atrocity. Raiders vs. New Day. No one cared. Raiders win. They. We need War Machine. We don't want the Viking Raiders. We want War Machine. The new vicious Viking Raiders. They look like How to Train Your Dragon cosplayers. And it looks fucking retarded. And then they... Attack Woods with the with their shields, and then they pilmonize Woods leg with the shield and a chair. Cause why not? Heyman's in the ring, and he does his typical shtick, and he says Roman's not gonna pin. He's not gonna submit Lesnar. He's just going to smash Lesnar. And then Brock shows up, and and Heyman's face is like, oh shit, here we go again. He's like, oh fuck. Ah <laughs> oh, Heyman, God love you. Although I am really concerned about you, Amy. You look like you look like the modern Alfred Hitchcock. It's really starting to look scary. He corners Heyman, and then Theory tries to attack Lesnar with the case, but Lesnar just beats the shit out of Theory with the case. And Theory runs like backs off, and then he hits a claymore, and there you go. And then um, um, Drew and Brock stare at each other. A little bit of a teaser. What's going to happen to Clash the Castle? No, not really. So that was my SmackDown review. Let's go on to the SummerSlam predictions. I was originally going to do this tomorrow, but I said I might as well just do it today. So we kick off with, well, actually, before I get into that, um, let's see. Um, Rollins versus Royal is unfortunately not going to happen. Here's what I think it might happen. One of three things are going to happen. A, someone from the main roster is going to debut. And, or somebody's going to debut against Rollins. Two, a return may, a return may happen. Or three, Seth may be added to the, maybe added to the Lesnar and Reigns match, but it's most likely not going to happen. So... Either a return or a debut is going to happen. There's people speculating that Johnny Gargano might be coming back, but I think Gargano made an appearance on Impact, so that's most likely not going to happen. I don't know what's going to happen with Seth. Maybe Ort might come back. Ort might come back, and he wants he wants to get revenge on Rollins for what he did to Riddle. That might be a possibility, but we don't know because Ort might not come back till the end of the year. In all honesty, so though, those are my thoughts on that. So let's get into the matches. Won't be taking long with these. We have the Human Toolbox, a.k.a. Logan Paul versus The Miz. Logan Paul's most likely going to win, and no one's going to give a flim, fine, fuck, a fight, a little, 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 fuck about it. God, I messed that up. I don't care I'm leaving it in. Yeah, Logan's winning because we can't have nice things. If Miz wins, the feud's going to continue, and I'm going to hate it because this shit they've been doing is absolutely atrocious, and that's because Paul isn't a atrocious human being. Because of what all the shit he's done and said. I don't care if he was young back then. That doesn't excuse you offending an entire country. I say and do dumb shit. Like in personal. In my personal life. On a daily basis and on camera. But guess what? I'm not offending an entire country you jackass. So yeah. Ciampa's going to be there. And he's going to amount to nothing. Because yeah. Ciampa cut a good promo for The Miz. That was for The Miz and not for him. So Ciampa is just being an afterthought. Liv Morgan was Ronda Rousey for Smack the Women's title. Give it, just put put the title on Liv. Ronda doesn't look like she wants to be there. Have Liv hold it at least till the Rumble. Give her a moment in the sun and then she could drop the Charlotte because Charlotte's going to come back. And we don't want to see Charlotte on her, on her television screen. No, we don't. Lashley versus Theory. Lashley. Because they're most likely going to have him versus Walter at uh, Survivor Series. That would be a really good match. McAfee versus Corbin. Bad way, I don't think Theory's cashing in. He can try, but he's most likely not going to... He's going to cash in, but he's not going to do it successfully. 
McAfee versus Corbin. It's going to be McAfee. Should be a good match, but... Should be a good match. It's just, again, Corbin, Corbin doesn't have any personality. He doesn't have a good character. If they would just give him a good character, then I would love him more. He's a good athlete. That's just it. And McAfee is a hell of a lot of fun. So, no DQ tag match. The Judgment Day community versus the Mysterios. One of two things are going to happen. A, the Mysterios are going to win with the help from Edge. Or the Judgment Day is going to win and Edge will come back and fend them off. Or they're going to have Ali and Mysterio show up and it's going to be a six-man tag. And oh god, make it stop, please. Watch Rhea Ripley and Aaliyah fight over the custody of Buddy Matthews on a pole match. Vince Russo has struck again, folks. Yeah, I think Mysterios might win, but I feel like the Judgment Day might win as well. So I'm actually going to go with Mysterios. Because I feel like Edge is, Edge is going to return. Then we have the Usos or the Street Profits for the Undisputed Tag Titles. Jeff Jarrett is a special guest referee. I, I expect a lot of chicanery because it's a Jeff Jarrett match. I'm going to go with Profits. I'm going to go with the Street Profits because I may be wrong because a part of me wants to say Uso so they can help hold on to the titles a little bit more. But I feel like the Profits are going to win here. It will be a good match? Could be. Then we get Bianca Belair versus Becky Lynch for SmackDown Raw Women, or not the SmackDown, Jesus Christ, for the Raw Women's Championship. They can do it like what they did last year with the 30-second thing, which that will be actually kind of funny in all honesty, but no, I think these women are going to tear the house down. I'm having Bianca win. Becky, Becky winning would not be bad, but that would kind of halt. Um... Uh, Bianca's momentum. Like, Becky could take a loss and still look strong in the end. I have a feeling Bailey might show up, though, because Bailey hasn't been seen in over a year, and we've been waiting for her to return. So she may be feeding with Bianca next, which that would be a really good match. I would save that match for Mania, in all honesty, and you can have Bailey win the title there, but I have Bianca winning. And then the main event, the last main stage match for the Undisputed WWE Universal Championship, the final chapter. Bullshit. Roman Reigns versus Bork Laser. I expect a whole hell of a lot of stuff to do. They're going to throw the goddamn Titan Tron at each other because why not? Roman's winning. If it was for the WWE Championship, I think Lesnar would have won. If, it's, if it was for the Universal title, I think Reigns would have won. If it's for both titles, Reigns is winning. If Reigns wins and he defends the Universal title at Clash of the Castle against McIntyre, McIntyre would win there, and you can have Roman have the WWE title and hold it until probably the Rumble or probably Mania. Because they're going to find a way for Roman to keep the titles as long as they possibly could because Roman is part-time. So that's what I think is going to happen. Will Theory cash in? He most likely will maybe try it after the match, but I feel like he's probably not going to. He's not going to win. He's going to um, not going to cash in successfully. Don't you fucking dare put the title on him. But anyways, those are my uh, thoughts and predictions, folks. Make sure you guys like, comment, subscribe. Join the herd. I'll talk in the next video. Peace out.